Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, today we would like to speak with you about the internet of threats and the connected cars in this new world, I would say, new digital world. So uh, definitely you, m or maybe all of you, maybe some of you have heard about the Kaspersky Club. So we actually are a global cybersecurity company which protecting over 400 million people around the globe around 300,000 different businesses, industrial facilities, financial, endpoints, banks, governmental, police. So, but all of that basically related to IT world. So you may ask, why we're here? Why we are here? So basically because of the cars, as all of us. So, but. Why? Let's have a look on what the car is today. Basically, we've heard a lot about the new cars or the future of the cars. And the car is today is not just a simple car. That's a working place, a new generation. That's sometimes your assistant. That's your might be a second living room, even for some of us, of course, not for all, everyone. <laughs> yeah. But the car is made a long road to this point. And uh, let's have a look on the evolution of the cars. The car of yesterday, the car of the past, I'm sorry, was the most secure car because there is no any connectivity. All things were mechanical and some of them with the combustion engine. Even some of them in the past was with electric engine. That was a 100 years ago but there was a problem with the batteries, you know. Um, so car of yesterday has already became a con first connected car. When you had a first GPS or internet connection, even radio, that's a first connection. And when the connection becomes more and more interacting with the functions inside of the car, that becomes a new benefits out of it, actually. That becomes interesting. And new assistance new cloud remote services, new possibilities to connect your phone to the car, to see the road, for example, if you don't have a navigation and built in your car, you might build your route on your, on your mobile phone, which will help you. And you even can connect your phone to the car, and it will speak to you, and it will help to speak with, well, on the loudspeaker with somebody without distraction from the road. There is a plenty, a plenty of possibilities, and of course, everybody is looking for the future. So for autonomous driving, when you don't need to drive, you just sit, put the point on the map, and relax, or work, depends, really depends what you want or can do. And of course, it might be a remote controlled car. Uh, for example, nobody needs to go to other town to call the car, because if you have a rental car or car sharing company, and you want, would like to have it back, and there is no passengers on that, probably point, maybe it's high in the mountains, it's just lost, just clicking, come back to home. And it's going back to home because it's know how to go. Because there is no, I mean, that's a science, but for today, it's not even a rocket science. That was complicated a few years ago, but today we've seen that they are driving across the cities. They already bring in passengers from and to. But again, why we are here? Yes, that's bright future have, unfortunately, with all the technologies from IT world, a flip side of the coin. But before that, let me a little bit speak about the connected car of today. So the future is future, but what is today? What we have today? And I would like to give a word to Sergei Zorin. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. And I'd like <laughs> to show you and discuss the connected car of today. <laughs> and I think that the main misconsumption, which I did actually stated yesterday from this stage, that and mostly the car actually, you look at the, just as a car. But the connected car, I mean, has direct connection to the internet today, it's even today, to the cloud services, mobile devices which are connected directly to the car or through the enterprise clouds. We already have examples, vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure connection. And why are we connecting to the car? 
because the, there is a lot of <coughs> benefits right now which are developing by OEMs and tier ones. There are a lot of benefits which we use in developing different services for us, for the clients, for who own the car. We already even uh, used to use it in every day. So a lot of um, telematic data right now in trend for many companies uh, and use uh, like insurance telematic, etc. But every of this benefit has some channel to connect to your car. And there is another flip side of the coin. And that is makes much bigger surface of attack to your car, to your channels, to the connections. So we can see there another picture, what it could be or what, where it can be the worst. I'd, I'd like to tell you the fresh example <laughs> three days ago. Uh, the series of vulnerabilities of Bluetooth stack were identified. And uh, actually, the cyber criminals can get the privileged access to device with Bluetooth without any authentication at all. I would add, if we speak about the cars, that uh, in cars there is a lot of um, embedded devices, Linux on board. And this is also may be among the possible targets. And I think that you remember two guys who showed to the industry, automotive industry, two years ago, the, um, to demonstrate it, actually, that connected cars may be vulnerable. Jeep. Here you can see that the next year and other, uh, we actually had public cases, and this is a not just one public warning. That's, it's very important to understand that, that security in developing cars is very, it's very important. Today, um, Mikhail will actually dig deeper into connectivity, mobile device, device which we already, everyone actually has connected to the car. And there are a lot of uh, possible ways to get in and, and others. So it's better to pass the <laughs> microphone. Thank you, Sergei. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, as you can see, and as, m as my colleagues already mentioned, there are different ways to connect to the car. But let's start from the beginning, or just with the smartphone. So I guess many of you, uh, almost all of you, actually uh, have a smartphone. And uh, please raise a hand. Which of you have an uh, Android device? Yeah, don't be shy. Well, almost a half of you have an Android device. So, there are very useful applications to manipulate uh, connected cards via just a mobile application. And uh, I want to describe uh, one real case uh, of it. Well, you may know that sometimes it's really very cold in Russia. <laughs> it might be, let's say, minus 20 degrees. And before going to work by car, we have to leave our warm and really comfortable apartments, go outside into the cold just to start the car and wait. Wait until the engine warms up and the heater makes things better. But to this moment, I usually look like this. So, I guess there is no such a problem in the warm countries, but I'm not so lucky to live in one of them. And my reality is usually looks like this. So it would be good enough to reduce the time spent in the cold and hostile environment to a minimum and just get to an already warm car. And fortunately, such opportunity already exists. So advanced modern cars have a useful feature. They can be started remotely via a mobile application. Thus, their owners don't waste time waiting for their cars to warm up. They just push a button in the mobile application while they are drinking coffee or making some other things at home, and after a few minutes, just came out to an already warm car. Well. Managing various subsystems of a car is becoming a common thing. 
Many popular car manufacturers offer it nowadays. And according to the statistics of these applications installed from the Google Play market, millions of people use them every day. But actually, this makes them nice targets for cyber criminals. So now people have some kind of remote control for their cars. But what if the phone was infected with the malware? So in this case, cyber criminals can gain access to the car via a mobile device. And so, in some cases, hijacked it. But OK, how could that happen, actually? Well, uh, the developers of the applications have worked hard, and the functionality of these applications is quite ex extensive, even for now. Uh, it is not just limited by uh, unlocking the doors or tracking the car's coordinates. In some cases, it even allows to drive the car without a key. And in particular, in this case, your smartphone is literally the key. So in this case, the only thing the cyber criminals need to steal your car is an access to the smartphone. But OK, let's try to understand how all this stuff works. There are three blocks in the chain that allow you to control a car via a mobile device. First is obviously the car. Second is the telematics infrastructure. Uh, you may think about it like a cloud service, which uh, is, handles the connection uh, from car and the smartphone, providing a connection between them. And last but not least is an application on the smartphone, of course. Uh, so as you can see, the car doesn't connect to the smartphone directly. And we assume, uh, just uh, for this case, that the channels between the infrastructure and the car, and as well as between the infrastructure and the smartphone, are secure enough to withstand all of the obvious attacks, like man in the middle or something like that. But it might be not so. Uh, we just haven't checked for now. <laughs> uh, but another point is to manipulate the behavior of the application on the user's smartphone. And this is the most vulnerable part of the scheme. But OK, let's start from the beginning. How does the malware can get on the user's device? Actually, there are many ways to do it. And the most common one is to use just social engineering. For example, left a message on the forum, automotive forum, uh, like, uh, I found some uh, very useful application, and it helps me to save so much fuel and money, just download it, install, and enjoy. So, uh, and the malicious li in the link to the malicious application, of course. Uh, or send a well-written SMS message or WhatsApp spam, uh, like, uh, I found your photos, please click on the link to check it. And of course, the links lead to a malicious application. Uh, well, in this case, uh, all the cyber criminals need is the phone number of the victim. But how can they get it? For Russia, it's quite simple. We often leave our phone numbers under the windshield of the car. You may have a question, why? Because uh, there are a lot of traffic, for example, in Moscow, and uh, there are so few parking places, I mean, free parking places. So in sometimes we park our cars very badly. And in this case, if I uh, badly park my car so it blocks another car, I want an enraged owner of the blocked car at least to call me before he scratches a bad word on my car with a nail. Just crazy Russians, you know. But there are a lot of different possibilities, uh, which uh, Sergey already mentioned. Uh, many exploits exist. So uh, there are a lot of vulnerabilities uh, which can be found in Android. So uh, it can be possible to just infect the phone without even the user's knowledge and his confirmation and so on. But OK. Uh, the malware got on the victim devices. Then it has three popular attack vectors to steal the connected car uh, account. And the first one is called routing. Well, like many others connected, uh, like many other applications, connected car applications store their data in a special place on the device using built-in capabilities of the operating system. 
Such data may include sensitive users' data as well, like login and password from the connected car account. And usually, it is stored as is, without any encryption. And it is actually a normal situation in the mobile development world because, ideally, no other application can access this data. Uh, it's just a feature of the Android OS, so every application runs in its own sandbox and they can communicate over in some, uh, well, predefined way. But as soon as the device is rooted, all these actions, like installing the application, uh, doing loading the application, or reading the information from the protected storage of another application, all of them can be performed by a user or by a malicious application, and moreover, they can be done silently, and the victim would suspect nothing. But how can the malware root the device? Actually, it needs an exploit to do it. And since Kaspersky Lab is actively monitoring the situation with the detected malware on the user's devices, we have a clear vision of the mobile threat landscape, of course. And it should be mentioned that approximately every third malware family has features for privilege escalation via vulnerability exploitation. So potentially, all those malware families can steal the data from the protected storage of the connected car app. And in our opinion, such attacks are only a matter of time. But we need to think about them right now. But the problem of rooted devices is also complicated by the fact that Android security update spread system is not centralized. Moreover, for some old or unpopular devices, there might be no updates at all. And as you can see from the table on the slide, uh, over a half of all of the Android devices in the world uses versions of the Android operating system with a lot of known vulnerabilities inside it. And of course, it doesn't mean that another half are invulnerable at all, uh, because it's just a matter of time. Well, here we have a quick demonstration of how routing works and how the malware can steal uh, the connected car account. Here we have two applications with perfectly designed icons, I think. Uh, one of them is pretending to be our connected car application, while another is our test malicious application. But it was a video, and I guess it doesn't run. <laughs> OK, uh, let me describe uh, in a few words what will happen. Uh, so we're running our connected car application, just typing in our credentials in the form. Usually, it has a checkbox uh, which would allow you to save the credentials, not to enter them each time the application starts. It's very useful. It's very comfortable. But anyway, uh, then. We can just start our test malicious application. In the real case, it can be already running in the background on the device. It can use some exploit to escalate its privileges to root and then just steal the data from the connected car's protected storage. And that's it. But uh, it's a pretty complicated attack because uh, you need to find an exploit, uh, you need to find a vulnerability, write an exploit, uh, and so on and so far. But there are attacks that allow you to steal the credentials in a much more easier way. And the first of them is called overlapping. OK, let's imagine that the phone is infected with the malware. And every moment of time, uh, the malware is tracking which application window is currently running and which application's window is currently in the foreground. So if it is the target application, and I mean connected car application, the malware just overlaps the window with its own one, which is a complete copy of the original one. And then the user, just suspecting nothing, types in his credentials in the appeared form, and his credentials just gone. And just in case, we made an experiment to prove this theory. The result you can see in the animation on the right. We're just starting some test automotive application. And uh, at the same time, test malicious application appears just in front of it. So uh, you actually can't see the difference between starting an application normally and with the case uh, of overlapping. And by the way, this attack is not only a theory. It has been being used by mobile banking Trojans for many years. Uh, of course, for stealing users' credit cards. 
And last but not least attack is called repackaging. So basically, every Android application can be decompiled. Then one can just make some changes to the code or add some new functionality to the code and build the application back. And it still would be workable, no problems. So it turns out that the user can download and install an absolutely functional connected car application with a small back door inside it, which is really difficult to notice. Well, it's a bit scary situation, and uh, this attack is not only a theory also. It is widely used in many malware families in the wild. Uh, for example, there was a Trojan downloader leech. It was a modified YouTube client with one useful feature to download videos to the smartphone to watch them later when you don't uh, have an access to the internet, for example. But well, with additional functionality of rooting the device and download many malware on your device. Uh, so this attack is not only a theory, as I already said, and it is uh, very useful uh, to bypass some security audit on popular Android markets. So um, everyone can easily find it in the internet and accidentally download it, install, and run. But let's sum up the results. In 2016, we checked the protection of nine different connected car applications against three described attacks. And none of them was protected. Then uh, we presented our research at the RSA cybersecurity conference at San Francisco. And we also published our research on our cybersecurity site, uh, securelist.com. Um, and a year later, we rechecked these nine applications, expecting that something, something must be changed. But nothing had changed. So we checked four more applications, uh, the newer one. Uh, and we were glad to see that at least one of them was protected against at least one attack specifically from rooting. It just uh, refuses to work if the device is rooted. But OK. Well, so far, from certain different connected car applications, only one was able to withstand only one attack. And this is a pretty scary situation, because you know, such applications are becoming more popular with every passing day because this is not surprising. Such features are extremely useful. They make our life easier and more convenient. But on a par with that, they pose a great threat to our property, actually. And now you may have a question. Who does need connected car accounts when with the same attack, cybercriminals can steal, for example, banking accounts? Well, fair enough. Uh, but do not underestimate the group of cyber criminals. We possess the information about connected car accounts are already being sold on the underground forums. And furthermore, there are people willing to buy them. The price is about $300 for each account. So the problem is actually already here. But we should note that it might be not so easy to hijack a car having only a connected car account, because cars nowadays are pretty complicated things with many layers of protection against hijacking, such as car alarm, immobilizer, or even the doors. But at least it would allow an attacker to bypass some of them. For example, open the doors without breaking the lock and triggering the alarm. But well, to proceed, an attacker would need some additional devices like the one demonstrated on the slide. Uh, particularly this one would allow an attacker to connect his laptop to the controller area network bus of the vehicle via ODB2 socket. And the next actions of the attacker just only limited by his imagination and qualification. And they also hardly depend on the car model and car manufacturer, obviously. So, as a security experts, we prepared some general advices for the users of such applications. And the most important one among them, please do not simplify the task for car hijackers. Please do not root your Android device. Because, of course, it will open for you some additional capabilities. Uh, but it also opens and gives these capabilities to the malware as well. 
So please do not do it if you are not completely sure about it. Well, Sergey? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. Yeah, please. Thank you. That's not for me, that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> While you're speaking, I remember one story from the, uh, the IoT world. That's Internet of Things. So that's everywhere right now, and more and more things become connected to somewhere. That's small things on your wrist, in your pocket, in your home, everywhere. So and that story was that with a small startup, they've made a very good uh, fit bracelet, which can measure your heart break uh, and differentiate uh, different activities you do, you're doing with the swimming or your running or you're making a are kind of powerful training. So uh, among all these things, it could even find out the, you know, there is sometimes the pre-night activities happening between the people. So it can also measure that thing. And you can, uh, after that, see your statistics. Someone else might, might be better to prove your results every time. So. Uh, the thing is, was, I mean, the entire thing was good. But the problem with that was because that thing automatically posted everything to the Facebook, to your account, which you need to log in to have this data from your application. So it's, it wasn't, I would say, the cybersecurity issue from perspective that somebody attacks that. But the problem that it's privacy. It's a private data, and nobody even asked you to out to publish that on your Facebook page or whatever it will be, the login. The idea that manufacturers or the creation, creators of the products, which is already connected as the cars or bracelets or your smartwatch or whatever it will be, it becomes connected to the new digital world. And that world more connected than we can assume, and it's not protected so far. If for a two or three decades, we are for a two decades protecting what's happening, and the three decades, the, all the connectivity is evolving to the current stage uh, in the IT world, the only technology have been taken from there and put it into the cars, into the new thing, actually have a legacy problem. And there is no new thing, new, protection, new cybersecurity measures invented for the new devices. There is some approach. We've seen the cases since 2015 of protected cars, of cyber secure cars. So the hackers, thanks God right now, it's mostly white hackers because they basically are researchers. They look in, into the problem then report this back to the OEMs or the tier ones who are creating for us these cars. These amazing cars actually, but with the security problems. And year after, when we're expecting that some actions will be performed from the OEM side or from where, and it was performed in uh, some cases, the situation is the same, the same, still the same. Right now, more and more people from the digital world interested, I mean, like uh, researchers, they are looking and they are doing something to help everyone in the automotive world to build more secure cars. But why, why the OEM need it? Because there is right now a standard. When you buy a car, you're pretty sure that's a safe car because the safety issues is the most important issues in a car. The car is safe. There is airbags, seat belts. There is ABS, there is ESP, there is different sensors which help in you basically save you from a lot of problems which might help on the road. And now this car is connected to somewhere by the digital interface, sometimes wirelessly, sometimes it's a wire in the, some garage. And there is an ability for someone to interfere with your car and basically switch off all the sensors in one car, all the safety measures just by single click. It means that safe is not safe anymore. If your car is not secure, there is no safety. That's safety. 
It is somehow there from perspective of hardware, but all the hardware is engaged with the software on top of that. And you can switch it off. That's why hackers on the dark net looking for these accounts, actually how the road accident could happen, that could be assassination. That could be real assassination, but the people will do what? They will just hack the car. Nobody to go with the killer with the rifle to shoot like in the movies. No. Think about that. Look at this schema once again. That's production cycle of the car makers. Well, in, in, in certain degree, of course. They think that it's really complicated from the manufacturer, from the vendors who are producing the cars, to control everything. There is a hundreds of hardware makers. There is hundreds of software makers for that hardware. And there is no holistic approach to protect all the chain. Sometimes there is a request and requirements to protect some things in the chain. But let's imagine you have a house and there is a door and you bought the really good lock. You've locked the door and you're pretty sure that's the steel door nobody will break in but you forgot to close the windows. That's enough. But there is not only windows, there is a lot of things which need to be cared about. And modern car, that's a have a plenty of connectivity. So just, and it's growing. I mean, new and new connectivity has come. So a couple of years ago, NFC was just in the phones. Now it's in the phones and in the car, and you just can sit with your phone in your car, and you connect it. We're not even enticing that. And Bluetooth, do the same. I'm sitting in my car. I'm not need to synchronize my phone every time. I'm just sitting and listening to music and have a conversation with my wife, kids, whoever will call me by work. So, and it's not asking me, do I want to connect today my phone? Is there a pin code to let this connectivity happen? No, it's synchronized once. And as Sergey said previously, in the Bluetooth stack, three days ago found vulnerabilities allowing everyone using your channel of Bluetooth. So anyone can interfere with your car without even asking to do. Uh, or to confirm anything, even if there is a securing code, it will be connected there. It's not only mobile phones. There is a modem inside your car, which calling back to, this, uh, to your OEM provider, which submitting back telematics data, which is a really good thing because our ma manufacturers can build for us a better cars. They have more statistics, they can polish the equipment, they can polish the spare parts, creating the real amazing things we've seen today, I believe all of us already seen the uh, car presented by different vendors. So I'm amazed, really, that's something. But they are connected. And they connected directly.